Hi everyone. Um, so I'm I'm recording this in the dark, so I get to try out my uh, my little night vision camera. And um, so, anyways, this story comes from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The same people that bring you made-up flus and poisonous vaccines. So, <clears throat> preparedness, 101, zombie apocalypse. Okay, there are all kinds of emergencies out there that we can prepare for. Take a zombie apocalypse, for example. That's right, I said Z-O-M-B-I-E-A-P-O-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. You may laugh now, but when it happens, you'll be happy you read this. And hey, maybe you'll even learn a thing or two about how to prepare for a real emergency. Okay, a brief history of zombies. We've all seen at least one movie about flesh-eating zombies taking over. My personal favorite is Resident Evil. But where do zombies... That's what it says here. Um, <clears throat> but where do zombies come from and why do they love eating brains so much? The word zombies comes from, uh, from Haitian and New Orleans voodoo, mysteriously reanimated to serve the undead. Though ancient voodoo and folklore tradition shows them... Shows like the walking dead were born. In movies, shows, and literatures, zombies are often depicted as being created by an infectious virus. An in infectious virus. Um, <clears throat> who creates viruses? Hey. Who creates viruses again? Medical industry. Oh, that's right. Pharmaceuticals. Um which is passed on via bites and contact with bodily fluids. Harvard psychiatrist Stephen Schoolman wrote a fictional medical paper on the zombies presented in Night of the Living Dead and refers to the condition as ataxic neurodegenerative satiety deficiency syndrome caused by an infectious agent. The Zombie Survival Guide identifies the cause of zombies as a virus called solanum. Other zombie origins shown in films including radiation, include radiation from a destroyed NASA Venus probe, as in Night of the Living Dead, as well as mutations of existing conditions such as prions, mad cow disease, measles, and rabies. <clears throat> the rise of zombies in pop cultures has given credence to the idea that a zombie apocalypse could happen. In such a scenario, zombies would take over the entire countries, or take over entire countries, roaming city and streets, eating anything living that got in their way. The proliferation of this idea has led many people to wonder, how do I prepare for a zombie apocalypse? Well, we're here to answer that question for you and hopefully share a few tips preparing for real emergencies too. It says that. Real emer f preparing for real emergencies too. See, they're saying it's not real. Okay. <clears throat> Better safe than sorry, it says. So what do you need to do before zombies or hurricanes or pandemics, for example, actually happen? First of all, you should have an emergency kit in your house. This includes things like water, food, and other supplies to get you through the first couple of days before you can locate a zombie-free refugee camp. Um, or you could say FEMA or F-E-M-A camp for short. Residential. Resi center. Residential relocation center. Um, you can like do one of those YouTube searches. There's a little bar right up there. Um, yeah, it's there. Um, and type in Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory. It's a video where he goes in, he exposes these corrupt fucking bastards. <clears throat> so, um, where was I? Where, actually, first of all, okay. <clears throat> First of all, you should have an emergency kit in your house. This includes things like water, food, and other supplies to get you through the first couple of days before you can locate to a zombie-free, say it with me, FEMA camp. Um, or, in the event of a natural disaster, it will buy you some time until you are able to, able to make your way to, a, say it with me, a FEMA camp. Concentration camp. Uh, <clears throat> or utility lines are restored. Below are a few items you should include in your kit. 
For a full list, visit the CDC emergency page. Just click on the sponsors. <clears throat> First, one gallon of water per person per day. Food, stock up on non-perishable items that you eat regularly. Preferably anything with preservatives, um, fluoride, or any other poisonous material that our government is trying to shove down your throat. <clears throat> medications, definitely take medications, especially if it's an expensive uh, name brand prescription. Wait, no, that's wrong, that's bad information. Don't, yeah, okay. So medication, this includes prescriptions and non-prescription meds. Now, tools and supplies, utility knife, duct tape, battery powered radio, etc. Because now you should all remember back when there was a, um, a chemical agent scare. Um, first thing, all you have to do is go in your house and duct tape the windows closed with some plastic sheets. Wait, that's fucking retarded too. Um, sanitation and hygiene, household bleach, soap, towels, etc. Um, clothing and bedding, a change of clothes for each family member and blankets. Just one though, that's... Important documents, copies of your papers, you know, driver's license, passports, and birth certificates to name a few. Um, you should, you should always, at all times, have at least 50 pieces of identification on you at all times. So when the Gestapo come in and they say, papers, papers please! Or that was, that was a very bad German accent. If you try to get away and drop your papers, <laughs> yeah. they're chipped. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely, um, when you do get your papers, make sure to ask for the RFD, RFID chip in the in the paperwork. That way you can be located at all times and, pref and possibly even eventually they can get the money on there so you don't have to worry about the paper cash. And, and, and then if you speak out against the government, they can just cut you off. Um, so, anyways, important documents, copies of, yeah, I got that. First aid supplies. Whoa, come back on. Okay, first aid supplies. Although you're a goner, if a zombie bites you, you can use these supplies to treat basic cuts or lacerations that you might get during a tornado or a hurricane. Okay, so. Once you've, yeah, once you've made your emergency kit, you should sit down with your family and come, with, come up with an emergency plan. That's in bold letters, so. Um, this includes, wow, I'm sorry for the blurriness, guys. <clears throat> Let me see, emergency plan. This includes where you would go and who you would call if zombies started appearing outside your doorstep. You can also implement the, this plan if there is a flood, earthquake, or other emergency. <laughs> it's good to know, man. Um, Identify the types of emergencies that are possible in your area bes besides a zombie apocalypse. This may include tor floods, tornadoes, or earthquakes. If you are unsure, contact your local Red Cross chapter for more information. <laughs> They've got a list of all the emergencies possible in your area. Uh, number two, pick a meeting place for your family to regroup in case zombies invade your home. It's or your frogs. <laughs> yeah, or your town evacuates because of a hurricane. Pick one place right outside of your home for sudden emergencies and one place outside your neighborhood in case you are unable to return, return home right away. Number three, identify your emergency contacts. <clears throat> That's, yeah. Um, like the police, fire department, or your local zombie response team. Also, identify an out-of-the-state or out-of-state contact that you can call during an emergency to let the rest of your family know you are okay. Number four, plan your evacuation route. When zombies are hungry, they won't stop until they get food, i.e. brains or, and or. Um, which means you need to get out of town fast. Plan where you would go and multiple routes you would, you would take ahead of time so that the flesh eaters don't have a chance. This, this is also helpful when natural disasters strike and you have to take shelter fast. Never fear, the CDC is ready. <clears throat> if zombies start roaming the streets, CDC would conduct an investigation, much like any other disease outbreak. CDC, <laughs> the people who brought you swine flu, not H1N1, swine flu, that's what it was called. I don't care what a Barack Obama wants to call it next. CDC would, pro pro CDC would provide technical assistance to cities, states, and, and international partners dealing with the zombie infestation. 
This assistance might include consultation, lab testing, and analysis, patient management and care, tracking of contacts, and infection control, including isolation and quarantine. It's unlikely that an investigation of this scenario would seek to accomplish several it's likely that an investigation of this scenario would seek to accomplish several goals determine the cause of, of the illness it's a good place to start um, the source of the infection virus toxin learn how it is transmitted and how readily it, it is spread how to break the cycle of transmission and thus perverse prevent further cases and how patients can best be treated not only would scientists be working to identify the cause and cure of the zombie outbreak but the CDC and other federal agencies <sighs> would send medical teams and first responders to help those in infected areas I will be I'm, I'm reading it. whoever wrote this page said they will be volunteering the young nameless disease detectives for the field work um, to learn more about what the CDC does to prepare for and respond to emergencies of all kinds the, to learn how to learn more about how you can prepare for and stay safe during an emergency visit this link are you prepared to tell us have you begun preparing for a zombie apocalypse or maybe you have been preparing for a more realistic threat like like hurricanes or the next flu season because everybody died you know I've had one flu shot in my life and that was like whoa a long time ago and I'm ashamed that I was stupid enough to tell us about what you're doing to prepare well I should I'm, I'm, I'm making videos talking about how fucking ridiculous your site and your recommendations are um, public comments. Comments listed below are posted by individuals not associated with the CDC unless otherwise stated. These comments do not represent the official views of CDC and CDC does not guarantee that any information posted by individuals on this blog is correct and disclaims or, and disclaims any liability for any loss or damage resulting from reliance on such information. <clears throat> so <laughs> um, if you would like my suggestion what to do in a zombie emergency turn off American news Fox News, MSNBC, CNN which CNN is actually the best they're like halfway uh, reasonable um, what I would do in a zombie in emergency wow <laughs> I'd, I'd probably smoke a joint. Peace, everybody. Thanks for watching.